It takes about two minutes. Okay. But anything you say from this point forward will be on the replay. Uh, we hold it as evidence against me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here, let me make sure it's all hooked up. <clears throat> Is that okay with lighting and everything? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, it's on. It's just going to take about a. It's going to take about another minute before people start coming in. Yeah, they're starting to. <clears throat> so we're going to be on Zoom, so I can only see the uh, comments on my page. Just for those of you who would like to make comments. Um, yeah, it's been a. It's a good way to start the month. November the first, October was a hell of a month, wasn't it? <laughs> we got a new friend here. And we're going to get to know her just like uh, we always do in front of everybody else. Ananta Kranti, right? Did I say that right? Yeah. Ananta yeah. Kranti. Kranti. Yeah. So welcome to uh, Soul Speaks 5D. Thank you for coming on. Uh, honoring us with your space. Uh, with <laughs> honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us. <clears throat> I just woke up. <laughs> what, time? Ago. what time it's, is it? Uh, two o'clock in the afternoon oh. but i stay up i stay up until some, usually between six and eight all right okay by the time i get to bed okay. but yeah i was just uh I, I actually woke up today going wow i feel pretty good today the last couple of mornings have been you know when you're out doing all that work during dream, dream state and you can just feel like all your muscles are sore and but uh it was just uh an appropriate ending to a very powerful month I, I, uh, we have a lot of people that want to come on the show and, and, uh, I don't normally, we don't, we, we, I don't, Morgan does, Morgan will find people that she, you know, she typically does the scheduling, but, uh, I saw your post that you put up last week and, uh, I thought, wow, that's, that's capturing, um, what, what it's coming down to because, and I'll just read that real quick. I read part of it, but, uh, okay. I the uh, like we like to talk about, you know, the human experience. Mm -hmm. And we got two hashtags: I am soul, and the human is the hero, because mm -hmm. nothing happens unless the human aligns with everything else, right? Right. But uh, and in real time intel, like what's happening now? Where are you at now? So last week you put up a post and. Uh, I share a lot of posts to Soulji, but I put it, I put the post, I actually put it on, on my page because oh, here it is, because um, I thought it was really good, you know, and like most of the expressions, probably all the expressions we all put out there, it is what it is today, right? I mean, it can change. Everything can change. Uh, literally, we wake up and there's a new truth. Um, but I'm going to read this uh, part of this real quick um, and, and what moved me to see if you wanted to come on. Um, you were saying that there's a lot of people, well, you see people pretending to know what's going on. Uh, and that sounds good. It resonates for others who feel comfortable when they believe they know what's going on. Thousands will follow a narrative that supports a belief that gets them out of the immense insecurity that comes for the ego when there's nothing to hold on to. It's unbearable for the separate self, sense of self to know and to simply be here in all of it. B, capital B E. Nobody really knows all the details, yet it's quite obvious a profound transformation of consciousness is taking shape. To be consistently present in the moment, it takes courage. Sovereignty, which is a word thrown around a lot, and you put it in parentheses, is a carrot for the separate set, sense of self. Otherwise, there's no need to claim something called sovereignty. The very idea of that is a moving away. Um, how about being fully in the world and not of it? I thought the key sentence here was, uh, otherwise, there is no need to claim something called sovereignty. The very idea of that is a movement away. I put that up on my page and a couple of people were like, uh, yeah, but sovereignty is sovereignty. And they kind of held on to it. 
And, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to the day when somebody can make a post and nobody comments. <laughs> but I thought it was I got I thought it was good because I got it. Uh, I got what you were saying. Uh, you weren't really pointing anybody out. You were just saying, hey, we are made up of these belief systems which shroud our soul. And as we expand, certain things are falling away, such as forgiveness. Like, I mean, if forgiveness is important, but let's face it, wherever we're landing, what people are calling 5D or multi-D, there is no forgiveness because there's no infringement on somebody's space, you know, physically or otherwise. And so when you use the word sovereignty, because like everything else, such as ascension or twin flame or so many of these other words, they they don't have the same meaning anymore. That's uh, right. Yeah. And sovereignty to me is one of those words exactly. that's becoming it's becoming exactly. right. So I thought it was and, and you could put a lot of words with sovereignty. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, in place of sovereignty in that sentence. But I thought it was good because of what you pointed out, which is and I've said this for a long time about myself and and others just observing. We go from one belief system that might be a box this big. And somebody presents a, a belief system that's a bigger box and we jump onto that one. And that's, that's okay. That's a natural yeah. progression, a natural evolution. But, and, and, you know, really to sum up your, to sum up your, uh, wait a minute, just had a, that wouldn't be good if my mic went out. Uh, but to some of what you were saying is just be present, right? And like my friend said a couple of weeks ago, he said, we're, we're learning what it is to be human, but we don't know what human is. Exactly. <laughs> so to me, exactly. Yeah, right. To me, what you said was look, just be present. And I've been saying for months, maybe the biggest challenge we're having is getting used to it. <laughs> is to know? just just be here because yeah. you know if, if there's that carrot of uh, i'm a sovereign being mm -hmm. like then it then it kind of you know in, in the first place when it when it first comes out and gets released into the field right then there's a recognition oh yeah i'm like i'm not i'm not here to be told what to do i'm not here to be you know all of that but then the sense of a self wants to claim its sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And right there, that's it, back in the box. Right, right. You know, you know right back in the box. It, it's a limitation. It's, uh, and then it becomes everybody's rap. And then yeah. it's just like, there's no energy in it. It's just like, uh, uh, like the word enlightenment got worn out, you know. But what it actually points to in the first place still exists. It just, the word has to drop. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. to actually be here without any word to hold on to, to claim, and be here with nothing to hold on to yeah. is the scariest thing for what we call the ego. It's the scariest thing for the sense of self to just actually be here with no no branch to hang yeah. on to and just fall that yeah. nothingness that's everything right like, exactly it's that nothingness that, and the other thing too is like the, the whole sovereignty thing yeah because obviously we know what's going on yeah. there's enough information out there the last 10 years and i've been saying this like how much more information do we need we know yeah. what we are we, i'm we, so happy you're saying you know that. I mean? so, like we yeah. you know what i mean like we know <laughs> so yeah. for me it's beyond sovereignty it's beyond exactly. surrender exactly. it's it's this space that you go i am a soul and i've done this before and uh you know nobody can get to me even if you put me in prison or threaten me exactly. or uh, it doesn't matter i, I exactly. am i am a soul and exactly. i'll be right back <laughs> I've, I've always been this yeah, I've never not been this. Why should I need to claim? You know, who needs who needs to claim that? Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah, there are many, I was pondering, like to, this afternoon, I was pondering because, I, you know, I see little things everywhere. And um, I was pondering on the word awakening, you know, what is it to be awake? And there's this kind of idea that there is something that's awake and there's something that's asleep. And awakening is, is, a, is never ending. It's, it's a process that's always, always opening and deepening and revealing. So to say I'm awake, there are many, many stages to that. Mm -hmm. Many stages of, of awakeness. There's no stages to what we are, but the stages of realization. And when that's kind of like in its beginning stages, then these words and this rap is kind of like the thing that takes the shape of now I'm awake, I speak this way. But to actually have nothing to hold on to in the way that I speak and be the openness of nothing coming through and speaking itself with no no fixed language or agenda is freedom from yep. from being the one who's awake. Yeah. 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 Um, a couple things. Uh, so we've done like three thousand shows. Uh, this as of amazing. October. Yeah, well it's done. been it's been a heck of a ride. Uh, so this happened like in October, but um, this is a reference point. I used to ask people in the early days, and I still do sometimes. You know, when did you wake up? And the best answer I ever got was this this young lady. She was probably like 20. And she said, I, this morning. <laughs> and, and I started laughing. And she said, no, every morning I wake up, I'm waking up again. And I got what she was saying. And right. then somebody somebody put a post up in the Sology group, you know, one of those posts where you ask a question. And they said, uh, how does somebody know if they're awake? And then, and again, there was all these answers, you know, right? I don't usually comment on posts, but it was like, I got to answer that because that was a great question. And I just put, they don't, they don't know they're awake. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not even, it's not even like that. It's just, yeah. Uh, and I think yeah. that's another thing that's happening is we, like your post talks about, you know, the, the what we will call the ego uh, wants to understand and wants to make sure that nothing's in the room smarter than it. So it's got to be able to understand everything. It's got to be able to define everything. And have so that the it can information. Be, yes. Have the information that's yeah. the right information that now I've got the information and I know. And, you know, all of this and, you know, the willingness to say, I don't fucking know what's yes. coming. That's right. You know, yeah. this is advanced, <laughs> really. Yeah. You know, the willingness to actually get out of the way. Yeah. So that's one of the crossroads we're at, right? I mean, the soul is the free energy of the universe. I mean, that pretty much says it all. It's free. It's It's got to be able to move. <clears throat> and it, if free of it can't, sovereignty. Yeah, if it can't move, then it's not free. But we know it's free. So how does it move? Well, if we try to just contain that within the human vessel, then then you start to have an issue. Oh, I can't move. I can't leave my house or I can't do this or I can't. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's within it's our own space. We know this as within without. So, yeah. yeah. And then I think the other thing that's happening, which your post kind of uh, exemplifies is even in the light worker circles, our definitions, our roles, our understandings, everything is up for change or to be removed and released i mean we're talking about the yogi guru type of scenario that was served as well right mm -hmm. but now it's becoming everybody's becoming self-empowered everybody's becoming their own healer everybody's becoming their own uh source of information because because it's just happening yeah. and so that's that's having a interesting effect on on some of what you see out there at least from my opinion i don't know what do you think yeah yeah and it's it's kind of time of cancel culture as well you know everything that gets kind of put in place then needs to be cancelled because it's it is that and it's not that it is that and it's not that 
Yeah. You know, like every time there's a place to land in any kind of fixed position or idea or it just is not that it's not that it's not, you know, it's again and again. Um, cancelled. Uh, and this leaves the free open spaciousness of yeah. being being that just keeps on revealing itself. And of course, in the in the beginning stages of when when a mind is opening beyond itself in the beginning stages they kind of want to have um a place to land and a language and a you know that and but there's this continuous letting go of the next identity that's formed who will you be who will mm-hmm. you be you lose all of that it's death it's ego death constantly yeah. There's been a lot, there's been a lot of that. <clears throat> it's been like a massacre in 2021. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, I mean, <laughs> I was watching, uh, I was watching this guy last night, uh, Pete Evans. He's in Australia. Uh-huh. He's a, he's a, a pretty well-known guy there. He was like a, he was like a celebrity chef. And I think he did maybe, maybe he was in some acting, but He's very well known and he's come out as a result of of the uh, quarantines and the COVID stuff and become really outspoken. And he was in an interesting conversation with a guy, I can't remember his name, Jason Miles. They were were having uh, just a chat like this. And Pete Evans, he's been on the show before. I'm gonna try to get him back on, but he, he was telling the guys like, you know, you know, everybody's talking about the doom and and what's wrong and and you know and and he said i find this so amazing that we're living in this time when when there's this incredible paradox where everything is in you know what in his own i'm saying my own words but well that paradox is the zero point the paradox Mm. is is the middle road Mm. which if from a human perspective it makes no makes no sense because what side am i going to be on you know kind of thing but i thought it was interesting because he said why isn't anybody talking about the other polarity these incredible individuals and therefore collective expanding so rapidly like like that's that's huge like what do you want to create what do you want to be uh you know and and uh and it was really refreshing to hear him talking because this is what we talk about on this show and you don't it's see beautiful. a lot of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know? So much focus on the, uh, the dark forces and this, mm-hmm. this, and you know, there's so much, yeah, it's, um, it kind of what one believes becomes their experience. Exactly. So as soon as they start believing that there's an us and a them and they're against us and they're trying to do this to us, then then that's what becomes your whole experience and that's where you live and that's your world and it becomes a part of the collective reality yeah uh you know and there is this this freedom of just not being part of any kind of battle that's going on and just remaining open to okay and 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 this and this you know i i sense that it's the beginning it's a it's a, you know, I heard many, many years ago, maybe 15 years ago, I received the information that it, there's a mutation taking place, a mutation where we actually, you know, some call it 5D, 5D, some call it ascension, some call it this, or it doesn't matter what you call it, but a mutation where we, we, we become the next we turn into the next, you know, we wasn't always this. We, we wasn't in these forms. So the mutation into the next of what this can be. There's no, uh, of course that's happening. It's so present. It's so obvious. Whereas 10 years ago, it wasn't obvious. Right. And so now it's in the consciousness field. Many are getting scared. Many are trying to kind of like, make sense of it, make it something, turn it this or that. But there's no, as soon as you're holding on to, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, now I know what's happening. 
you know, it's a limitation and it's incredible what we are. There's no yeah. limitation to it. Yeah, it's like that old saying, what you're looking for is right in front of your face. You know, yeah. we always, we've all lost something and we go back and see, or my keys are right here the whole time or, <clears throat> but it's like that. And uh, it was interesting too, with, well, listening to these two gentlemen last night, because I don't see, I, I see like your, your, um, your post alluded many things. One of the things that alluded was these belief systems that get thrown out there and we grab onto them and we've all done it. Uh, but we've, we're continuing to let go <clears throat> and there's nothing, there's nothing left. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I mean, so, so we're this getting the, yeah. the, the large proportion are, are hang on to it and then it becomes a thing and then it becomes a movement. Mm -hmm. And because so many are kind of like, just, just kind of beginning or whatever, then that movement is something to fit into that's now spiritual and now yeah. is the five D ascension group or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's this constant seeing through that. Okay. Let go of sovereignty. Can you, what mm. happens if you let go of sovereignty? Now, what have you got now? Who will you be? Right. Who will you be if you can't claim anything? What are you now? You know, if you um, listen to, uh, if you listen to, I, I caught a, a, a three minute video of Dolores Cannon yes, yesterday. Uh, and uh, cause everybody knows of her work. I don't and know. Who is it? Who's Dolores it? Cannon. She's the one who. I've heard the name. I yeah. She, she, and she wrote several books. She uh, is a QH was the original QHHT practitioner where they do regression so she ended up, you know, having thousands of sessions with people and she put the information that was coming through together, which talked about the first wave and the second wave and the new earth and all that. But I was watching this little clip and she was talking about, uh, uh, now I can't remember. <laughs> uh, oh, she was, she was talking about, she was talking about new earth. And of course, everything's a metaphor. Everything's a metaphor. That's another thing we need yeah. to get over. We need to yeah. we need to understand it's a message. Exactly. Energy. That's a yeah. So she was talking about the new earth, you know, and yeah. a lot of people, including her, Edgar Casey, other people, talk about the earth splitting, and there's two earths. And again, this is a metaphor to me. Yes. But listening to you, I was going, you know, everyone wants to know how you get to to five D or how you get to new earth, which I think it's already here, whatever. But it's but, already been. It's you know, always it, been. Exactly. But like mm -hmm. talking to you, because I try to put everything in, in the human terms. So like right. talking to you, I'm going, okay, you know, it's pretty simple. If you want to focus on all that us versus them, you're going to be in the old earth, yes. you know, and if you want to focus on what can I create, who can I love, who do, who wants to be with me mutually and, and, and just, yes. you know, just that, right? Yeah. Nature that's that's new earth but you know and then as far as do they live side by side do they actually split no, who cares because this is the real where the division is happening what i'm finding yeah, yeah. because yeah. you know I, i'm naturally drawn to certain places cafes restaurants people where suddenly we're, we're just having the the conversation you know that that's that's in what you're just um talking about um, as soon as you, this is the, the division, as soon as you're in the fear and the, the panic of what's coming and all of the judgments of what we need to do and who's right and who's wrong and who's, you know, all that kind of, that's the division that you yeah. divide yeah. right there. That's, that's, that's it. It's consciousness that is, is appearing as a division, but of course we can never divide right. what what is whole so yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't have a human experience without it that's the value of Duality. the human experience is the expanse of is the distance between polarities right yeah. i mean and uh I, I mean i i i feel more than ever that this whole COVID thing yeah was the greatest idea we ever came up with because it's <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, if you look at it for everything that we're 
we're have taken an issue with mm. oh i can't leave my house or or, or i got to get a vaccine or uh, uh i gotta wear a mask or whatever these things if you look at the energies behind it they're actually serving us very well like we're, we have to be alone with ourselves we have to be alone with people that we live with for years that we never talked to you know we have to be uh the kids are no longer going to school so they're home that energy is there uh, we're, we're not we're, people are working remotely now so they're not yeah, going I, into the you know, so it. everything is being altered if you look at it the polarity you look at wow this is actually serving us because we're also being given all of these these energetic presentations and we're starting to go i don't i don't think i want to do that you know yeah. people are actually <laughs> yeah people are actually or or i want to do that yeah. or you know i mean because i've seen people come on the show and say I, I got the jab uh and i'm good with it in my heart my higher self told me to do it you know or people saying the other way but yeah. and i think that's the other thing too is this whatever we want to call it this advanced consciousness that's coming out in us uh is one that stays in its own lane like if i'm looking at you and saying oh she's not awake or oh she's got this or oh, i'm not i'm not at 100 percent, not even mm. for a moment mm. I, I don't see anybody walking on water yet so i think we need to just <laughs> kind of mind our own business right? yeah this this whole um this virus thing it it so represents it's a representative mm -hmm. actually it's like a, a it's not even that it's a representative of all that it brings and how much we buy into it and how much we how we then respond to everything around it was all was already there in in unconscious or shadow whatever you want to call it but it's brought it all up and it's bringing it all out and the fear and the manipulation and everything it's there's so much anger all the stuff around it is that representative it's just that that whatever it is uh, it's been placed there as a representative and it's just brought this whole thing and it's not even about that it, it's really there's so much there's so much coming there's so much and yeah. as you said you know it's choices we have to make inner inner choices that are not governed choices right you know and that really comes up so from so deep within if we don't go here and and go like well i will do this because mm -hmm. but we actually feel that energy coming up and let that be the guide yeah. you know yeah. it's um it's another thing it's another way of moving where where is the government you know the government is is coming up from deep inside and and making the laws in place you know that's how i'm kind of because i you know i need to take another flight soon and i had to check today about that and the moment i started going there and all of the you know the, all of the thing around it started coming i was like you know these are the rules and then i'm looking inside like okay what what way is this going to move what are the what are the what's the law here mm -hmm. you know it's really yeah it's 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 not about that little c thing no v yeah. thing yeah well i mean you know the the that's right and and if you if we look back at the this uh, experience that we've had everything is a suggestion yeah everything is put forward as a suggestion even if you look at the mandates mandates aren't laws uh you've got many many uh uh leaders that are saying we're going to do this and they're not asking anybody so you know it's a, just a suggestion it's an idea it, it's it's a it, it's not even an inducement although there's there are things that lure people to make that decision and, and you might call it coercion but it's our decision so if yeah. you if you i'll use me as an example if um you know if i was told you know yeah. you can get a passport and you can go to australia to be with morgan uh but you've got to take a jab 
I don't know what my answer would be, but mm -hmm. I would decide when that was actually a reality and presented to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. do I have enough alchemical mastery at this point that I can take something in and, and find uh, equilibrium with it and, and, and basically transform? uh whatever right i mean i tell this story a lot i was homeless for two years i ate mcdonald's five days a week it's horrible for you but it was alchemy for me i talked to the food i said this is all i can afford thank you mother <laughs> thank you father for this food and uh we became one and i i was able to actually get in better and better physical and nutritional you know mm -hmm. shape uh which yeah. made no sense but this is what this yeah. is what we are this yeah. is this beautiful what you're saying because it's it's really i'm i'm ex experiencing it more and more there is a whole new way of interacting with absolutely everything mm -hmm. the old way of of <laughs> everything it, it what we interact with everything we take in i've got a bottle of essential oil in my hand now but mm. food the drink the everything we're in conversation with how we interact with it is is it, 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 there's a whole different uh, way of communicating with everything in this multiverse yeah, that brings yeah. it into its own reality by where we come from. So right. yeah, including the whole idea of awakening, what that was is not what that is it's every word is taking a different meaning a different shape and it cannot last long before it's blown and remade and yeah so anything we attach to the idea that uh if you eat mcdonald mcdonald's uh, how many days a week was it five five days a week sometimes yeah. sometimes more well, where can you eat for five dollars <laughs> you know what do you but, eat now uh i mostly take in i take in about 80 to 90 percent organic uh juice you know, mm. like 75 percent vegetable 25 percent fruit and i and i i eat pretty much an avocado a day but i but i break you know i'll 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 go get uh i went and got uh some italian food this past weekend just to treat myself but and it, what, it's, do you notice the difference between the McDonald's and, and what you're living now? Well, when I ate the McDonald's, that was 10 years ago, eight, uh -huh. nine, 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. I was walking a lot, like probably about eight to 10 miles a day. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just my meditation or whatever, my survival. I don't know what it was, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was able to get in the best shape I'd been in since I was like 20. Wow. Um, but there was a lot of walking. I did a lot of, I was dancing in the clubs at night. Um, did you sleep so, rough? So, did I sleep rough? Hmm. You said you were homeless. Did you, did yeah. you speak, sleep rough or? Well, it depends. I'd say about a third of the time I slept outside, a third of the time I slept hmm. um, on a friend's couch and maybe a third of the time I slept in a hotel room. Wow. But uh, yeah, it, it was it was uh, it was the way I woke up, and uh, even though I didn't know it at the time, I was I was consciously working with energy. And to your mm -hmm. point, um, but but I will say this: um, I started juicing in earnest middle of June, right mm -hmm. after the Sology Fest when I got home, and uh, and the changes after probably two months of purging, <laughs> two months of detoxifying, too much. Two months of detoxifying um i noticed immediately uh lots of things clarity uh yeah. my vibration my yeah. lightness of being um, yeah. my ability to uh, uh have what i would call conscious dimensional experiences yeah. lucid dreams increased uh, it's mm -hmm. still increasing uh, i would say some by location but that had kind of occurred before uh, but just, it just, and really for me, it's just been what my body's telling me. I'm not putting it on anybody. I'm not saying, Hey, you need to go do this or have to go do that. Yes. But for me, my body was telling me, um, we're going to do this. And so now it's, uh, if I go a day without juicing, it's, it's not often. And if I do, 
it's because uh, the energies have knocked me on my ass and I can't get out of bed or I'm laying on the couch and, you know, but, but mostly it's coconut water, water, yeah. uh, and, and juicing. If, if I do uh, rarely eat meat, um, but I might now and then nothing major, but, uh, but I, I, I feel it going away and I'm not judging it. You know, mm. I'm not judging. I'm having some habits uh, over these months have dropped away. Um, no sense in getting into it. <laughs> Everybody knows me pretty well, but I'm not as I'm not uh, doing a lot of things I used to do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but the thing is, it's like what I noticed is what has been important is when I do want to do something you know, uh, smoke, drink, eat something, whatever it might be. Um, I'm noticing two things. One, if I do it, I'm, I'm not in a, I don't have a sense of judgment, self judgment, or self deprecation for doing something. Mm. Uh, and the other thing is, sensory wise, it's like an incredible experience. It's like making love, you know, like you eat a, a piece of pizza, you know, maybe I ate a piece of pizza three weeks ago or something from the corner place. And it was like the greatest piece of pizza I ever had. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, my body's saying, Oh no, 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 you're not going to do that. Or yeah. yeah, let's yeah, do, yeah. yeah. So there's something uh, going, totally related to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, has your body, the, the voice of the body. I know we think of the body as just the physical body, but has that, has that gotten louder uh, over the last few months for you? Are you, are you experiencing anything like that? Um, over the last few months, uh, I, well, I had COVID um, in uh, August, a couple of months ago, and I can tell you that, um, I mean, I, yeah, I've been on organic diet for years and years, um, but with, with a few little, whatever you want to call them, vices, like, mm -hmm. you know, I used to eat a lot of um, chocolate and like to drink the best coffee, um, but COVID, <laughs> cut that it really? was re yeah it just really was like a, a 100 percent movement in a direction that was everything to yeah I, I i experienced the covid a bit like there was some changes happening in the system of course that thing is going to make some changes but it also changed everything it's changed a lot of things in my psyche in the sense that yeah, I just was definitely moving in a direction that didn't include chocolate anymore or coffee or anything that wasn't kind of like moving the system to another frequency, you know, like to its most calm and re-energized and nourished. And it just kind of changed a lot of things. And then in my psyche, it's like, okay, I'm not having that anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. having that anymore. I don't have space for that. No, that cut radical, like a radical reset. I felt it like, and yeah. yeah, soon following that, I just kind of booked a flight and took space from, from the things that are like cause stress or whatever, and just took time out. So, and I, and I really feel like, um, that allowed for a whole new dance or mm, there's something that I can't put words mm -hmm. into. It's just delicious. It was, was your, when you had COVID, was it, did you have like a lot of stomach issues like digestion or just acid or just aching or bloating or anything like that? A lot of body ache, a lot of pain yeah. in the body for, for some days. But no, the digestion, I don't. Wasn't bad. Recall. No. Yeah. Um, uh, but the pain, you, the pain in the body. Sorry, yeah. See, I'm not sure. I, I mean, if I, if I, from my own personal knowing, we both got it in Florida when it first came out. Mm -hmm. um, and we both knew we did. We didn't get diagnosed. And then it would have been about three weeks ago today, maybe four, it would have been around the, the eighth or something of a, or a little bit earlier than that. Uh, I got something on a Monday and it came like that. And I laid on the couch for five days and I documented some of this, but, uh, 
what I was getting at, uh, and I don't know officially if I had it. I know I had it, but uh, and my my friend got it the same day. There was a lot of stuff going on that week, and my friend ended up transitioning, Franco De Nicola. But um, what I was going to say in what in in light of what you were talking about was, I it, it was an the entire episode was a high level, energetic transformational experience. All my voices were present. Um, and one of the things that occurred was similar to what you're talking about. Certain things were leaving, mm. um, and then certain things were altered slightly. Like, like when I, when I went through it, I was like, I'm not drinking coffee anymore because I was sick and I was just like, but mm. when I came out of it, just like the synchronicity always works and the se sequential aspect of, of what we're experiencing a friend sends me a text out of nowhere and says, you know, if you drink coffee and you sprinkle um, baking soda, um, a pinch of baking soda in it, it'll neutralize the acid. So anyway, I went to the, to the organic store and just on a whim, I bought some organic coffee and then I started this process. So I drink a couple of cups a day now, not, not a whole pot anymore, and I don't have any issues. So that was one thing. This is an example. But the, the main thing was in the process of this transformation and this experience, sitting with COVID, sitting and how it presented itself to me, which was this whole procession of demons. Will you take them into your heart? Are you afraid? And so on and so on and so on. But I was told you're, you're from a cellular or even an atomic level, your body is being reformed. I, 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 I was knowing that. I was yeah. knowing my body was being changed, even though like every virus will change the body, you know, if you mm -hmm. get hep or, you know, there'll always be a change, but this was different. It was really like, okay, this is a reset. This is a, there was really something different. Yeah. And it really, really was like, there was a kind of a cutting of anything that took energy f into a lower frequency. It was like, don't, no, don't, no. I w like engaging in whatever with anybody. It was like, no, right. no. Like, because it's something in the system wants to gather all the, the right uh, whatever to do the work it needs to do to come to a new place. And it really was clear. Yeah. Like radical. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been like this? Or have you, have you always been this weird? <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that to everybody. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, most of the people that come on, just the, the, I'd say 85%, it's, hey, I woke up. I, I was born this way. Uh, I thought everyone was like me. Uh, I got shut down at some point, either late, you know, like preteen or once I got out of high school and, and went into the world and I, and I went into the matrix, but then I had a couple of things happen, traumas, da, 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 and I, and I kind of reawoke. I've got mm. guides speaking to me. I've got the universe is speaking to me. Things are happening and, you know, they get estranged from their family. They break relationships and they travel to weird places and do that weird things. Have, have, I get the impression from looking at your stuff that you've been, you've been doing this a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say in very, very early school, I just, mm. you know, there was a knowing that I'm not going to do this life they're telling me, you know, yeah. that, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going free. Like the moment, the moment I am able to get a plane ticket, I'm out of here. And yeah, I, I left and went for a free life. I think like um, age 19, I left England and went to travel the world or whatever and lived um, nearly 30 years, 27 years in Asia, wow. in Thailand. And um, yeah, I got in, I think I was in my 20s. Yeah, I was in my 20s when I kind of got onto the official spiritual path, you know, like went into long meditation retreats and went into ashrams and stuff. Um, wow. But then, yeah, it was, <laughs> over while I was in jail, actually, I was uh, a few years solitary confined in Whoa. Japan. In Japan? Uh, mm. 
Wow. That's... And yeah. Yeah. In I, silence. I... No. No speaking three years, nearly three years. Three years solitary? Yeah. Wow. Almost. I've been, I've been in solitary for like 24 hours. Uh, and I've only been in for, I've been in a few times, but always just like overnight. This is mostly when I was younger, but uh, when the last time was, day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The light, uh, light workers are hell raisers, right? But uh, uh, yeah, I was in for 34 days and that was, uh, that was early in my reawakening. And that even though there was a 25 minute cell, there was an amplification, even though I'd been homeless and I was in the constant communication, but there was an amplification in the environment of, of my own presence with myself. Mm, exactly. It was, it was very strange. It was, yes. it was a very internalized experience. I can't imagine what it, would, what it would be like three years. Yeah. That, it did you, ended. Yeah, it ended. Did, did your relationship with your presence? I'm sure. I mean, mm. what did, what, what was the, the good polarity of three years in solitary? it was the end of who I thought I was mm. it was over it was gone um yeah I became although I didn't become anything I became the space of the cell yeah uh which was aware of itself and that expanded beyond the cell and beyond the country and beyond the so that space of being because i was also taken to a factory to work every day mm. like a slave so that space of being was the movement of uh me you know wow. so yeah i mean but i was very um before i got locked up i had already consciously surrendered i had a guru I surrendered my past. I took a name. You know, I got my name there in India. Um, so I was already surrendered to the exploration of eternal truth. Um, so, yeah, I, I had all, all the time to uh, be with that constantly while at the same time being totally triggered by the emotional, psychological distraction of the ego going on while at the same time seeing through it and finding what is free yeah. what is still free what what they cannot take what right. they cannot take they've taken it all they've taken absolutely everything they've taken i cannot have a visit i cannot have a letter i cannot have nothing they've taken it all but then what revealed was what cannot be taken right and in that revelation came a, a tiny smile started to reveal itself inside as I was getting screamed at by guards and whatever and that smile began to you know it was like this this can't be taken this smile is free right uh, and that began to grow and grow and, and grow. So even in the face of being screamed at, there was this knowing of what can't be taken and what can't be hurt and what can't be, you know. Um, so, and I feel that, you know, that changed absolutely everything in my reality, of course. And coming back into the world and all that madness was a process to integrate that into wow. living as a personality again because if if you're not in any kind of re relating the personality is non-existent you know it doesn't have a role to play yeah so coming back and reforming again this into personality play and being in the world with triggers and everything was a process and yeah i started teaching a few years after that and facilitating that realization for others um and yeah i've been doing that for 20 years or something like that far out yeah that's pretty, yeah that's that's hard to uh i mean you know to come out and reassimilate yourself with the world 
um, like you were saying, triggers, uh, personality. That's a strong, that's a, that's a interesting, uh, I, I kind of feel like that, um, well, certainly we have a personality or personalities, depending on what part of our life you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, that's certainly, I like the way you put that with, you know, functioning in the world. And I feel like that, you know, we all have a soul signature. Yeah. So our soul has a certain, certain uh, traits, let's just say, it can be it strengths, weaknesses, whatever, or not weaknesses, but certain strengths, certain things that we illuminate you know, based on our signature, but the, uh, the, the personality part, you know, I was listening to, uh, Elon Musk the other day, he was in an interview and they were asking, they, they, they were saying something to him about how he had spoken to his, to some of his employees because he works like 20 hours a day. Right. And he was saying, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. So it sounded kind of harsh. And he said, I, you know, I made a lot of mistakes and I don't make as many as I used to. But when I look for somebody, I just used to look at their, basically at their resume and their education and so on. Now I look at, I never considered their personality. And I thought, what the hell is he talking about? But what he was talking about was in the personality their kindness, their heart either comes through or it doesn't. Yeah. So the, the, the conclusion of what he was saying was that he, he, he sees that people with good hearts, um, which I think in some way comes through a personality, uh, but people with good hearts and a company with, with built with good hearts or a team or an organization or whatever, um, their productivity is just like through the roof. Oh, like, yeah? like there's something about the heart, almost like, almost like he was, I'm reading between the lines, but like people that make decisions through the heart, you know, like that are, that are going to question the ethics or the moral standing of, of what they're being subjected to or whatever the case is, uh, which I thought was interesting from somebody like that. Cause I've never been a real big, you know, follower of him, but, but yeah, I mean, what was that like to, uh, I mean, you were in an environment where you were triggerless, I would imagine, almost almost triggerless. If you have people sc screaming at you and you're in these conditions and they, I know they treat you like a dog, I mean, you must have been smiling uh, through that stuff by the time you got out of there, like you were talking about. By the time I got out, not when I first went in, I was, yeah. I was totally like locked up and in fear and and everything in the first in the first 10 months, you know, and come to a point of suicidal. But um, and that's just it, the ego is getting broken down. And there's a death happening, because you got to let go of the world out there, you got to let go of all your dreams, you got to face your mind 24 seven, you know, and at the same time, get like, although we were in silence, I was with uh, Japanese women who were in there for murdering mostly their husbands. Um, so that amount of like hatred and all of these energies that are in the field are in the field. So how do you find your way out of there? You need to transcend what's in the field. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, the, the system and the intelligence of the system found a way to I, I say, go out the door, go out the door of this river of greed and hatred and all of that that was kind of like being projected in my direction quite often because I was the only white woman, the only yeah. Westerner. So all of that coming at all these kind of daggers and then finding a way to like go out the door into a space that, and actually, what was the uh, the vehicle that I used to go out the door into a space of absolute beauty and bliss and love and truth was through the doorway of food. Really? Mm. 
Well, the first few months I was in there, I couldn't, I couldn't eat at all. I couldn't put food in my mouth. So I just lost, 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 I don't know, 18 kilos or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the moment that I started to put a little spoon in my mouth and close my eyes and totally connect yeah. and totally go with it, become one with it. Yes. You know, like there's nothing else in existence. If there was carrot, I become carrot. Like, and so this kind of like tantric way of being with yeah. what's in my mouth, it would, it, it, you know, I would, I would go with this and go with this and like really appreciating whoever grew the carrot, the growing of it, the carrying of it, the washing of it, the cooking, all that was working in me. I had my eyes closed and I would just like end up in this like carrot existence where there's nothing else. But that, and with that came like, you know, it's a tantric experience. It's, I end up in bliss. And the moment I opened my eyes, because we, we were having only six minutes to eat, so I would like completely let go of the idea of time, you know, because there was this like feeling in the air of everybody, you got six minutes, <laughs> the scoffing, like the mad an animal scoffing and greed and all of that was so unbearable that I had to find a way out of that to be able to eat. And so after the whole process of that, I'd open my eyes and they'd all be kind of glaring at me with this hatred. But it was something that I, I started to do three times a day because we were taken to this food hall three times a day. And it wasn't with an agenda. I didn't say, okay, now I'm going to do this and then it's going to give me that. It just gradually, gradually happened that the intelligence of the system was finding ways to bring itself into states of bliss without a plan. Yeah. And there was nobody in that. And there was no prisoner and there was no victim and there was no. So I kind of disappeared as a separate. After some time, you know, I would say it took 18 months, maybe. And then I was just the space of being. And then, you know, there were some experiences that happened, but the experiences are not it. They're significant in the moment. Yeah. But changed everything. And um, yeah, after that, I, but I didn't have a label. Oh, now I'm awake. I right. didn't have some kind of story like I've woken up or it was just uh, I was in a in a completely, you know, and, and at night, like I heard you speak about dream states at, at night, I never slept for about two years. I was lucid dreaming right. every night. I'd go wherever I wanted in, in, you know, I'd go to different countries. I'd be in, in shops taking off the shelf exactly what I wanted, you know, I'd be in this like these other worlds and these, these states were going on constantly but i never had any kind of label like this is this or now right. i'm awake or i came out of there and was shocked to come back be deported back to england and into uh the my father's house and suddenly i was like supposed to be this daughter again and uh wow that's trippy it was really trippy that's trippy that's almost it's like uh like, i knew i was almost like a time traveler you know yeah yeah. Um, God, you yeah. said a lot there. What you were saying about the tantric thing, though, that's that's what I was talking about. Like, yeah, like McDonald's. I became. That's like when people talk about AI, and everyone has their own opinions. Mine's not. I'm not saying mine's the truth. Yeah. But people would talk about AI is going to do this and AI that. And I'm like, I look at it like, okay, wait a minute. That's the same God substance I am, right? If everything out there I'm looking at is, is the same thing. Now it may have a certain charge to it or a certain uh, proclivity or, or energy to it, you know, dark light, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But, but, there, but I can, I can engage, embrace that fearlessly and and work to transform it i'm not recommending people do this i'm just saying this has been my evolution is to is to not push things away 
you can't divorce yourself from any part of the universe because you are the universe, right? So yeah. there's yeah. something about that. That's, that's one thing I can relate to that. And I can attest to that eating McDonald's. I know what they do. <laughs> it's just, but at the same time, it was about how I looked at it and what relationship I had with it. So over that yeah. two years, the same thing happened to me. I could yeah. feel it. Uh, I could feel it working with me, right? Uh, and, you know, the other thing that you were talking about, too, is, is uh, you know, how when you engage, <coughs> when you engage, let's say, external things of the universe, be it from here or when you tap into this, this relationship that you're talking about, it expands. It doesn't just, you don't just come together like one plus one equals two. It actually, when you use it and you tap into it, it actually starts to grow. And like, <laughs> you, were, like you were saying, it, it, it has its own, the system has its own intelligence that recognizes, I don't know how to say this, but recognizes transformation. It recognizes collaboration. And there's almost uh, like a Holy Spirit or a third energy that's working with you that's saying, hey, this door just opened or this door just opened or this person just called you and you needed something or, you know, there's something about it that 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 to me, I always say that's the real virus. You know, What's that's the real virus? well, just that energy of of collaboration you know, kind of that infinity sign energy of like when you engage the food, you engage the food, uh, you started to eat, this relationship starts and then it starts to grow and it starts to grow. Like you're, you're uh, going anywhere you wanted to was like a yeah. metaphor of yeah. that too. Like first it yeah. was you, then it was the cell, then it was the building, then it was, you know what I mean? So there's yeah. something about engaging that you know, what's that old saying, where your, where your focus goes, energy grows or whatever. Right. I don't remember. But, flow, yeah. 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 But so that can be either the, the, the dark polarity, if we want to use that term, yeah. or it can be this other polarity. Yeah. And the thing, the thing for me is the, the polarity that, that we've been so affixed to, we know that one, like yeah. there's nothing new being told to us there. It's not like a, a you know, but if you go the other way, you don't know anything. Well, no, it's the In fact, unknown. you know less and less and less, but your experience gets bigger, bigger and bigger, right? But the ego cannot go there. And right. that is the thing, is that, you know, I would say in that whole situation I was describing, um, that was survival, but it wasn't survival for the ego. Right. right. It's the way that the system found a way to survive, but it wasn't survival for the ego. If the ego is looking for a way to survive, it, it wants to have knowledge, it wants to have, you know, it, it kind of shrinks down into, you know, like the fear makes it hold on to things and especially information and yeah. identification. But survival for the soul level is out the door. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like what I call going out the door it's it's the unknown that's survival you know and that's 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 where i could go. and i think a lot of people in that situation don't wake up you know and it's not you, you can hear many i guess you do because you're talking with a lot of people that extreme circumstance can often be the vehicle in which the door opens but it's not for everyone you know that sometimes the extreme circumstance can become the the uh, trauma damage hell realm yeah and it's i i feel that we're in a time where even though what is free will there's no free will for the ego and yet in in recognizing what we are free will comes along with that to to yeah i mean i don't yeah. really know how to express that. No, I got that. It's it's like I, I get that um, what you're saying because I'm a big believer that 
for me, I like to keep things simple. It's like, so if I can align my free will with universal will, well, what is universal will? Universal will is just expansion. Yeah. It's, 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 it's going out there and, you know, it's not stagnant. Um, I think that's, uh, I can see what you're talking about. Um, but like this, this, uh, uh, the things that come from giving life to that, which makes no sense at all from the human perspective, it makes no sense at all. Um, <laughs> that two years, and it's, it's really interesting what you're saying too, about the ego and the soul, because I could, and I can talk and write pretty good, but I could never put this into words until right now, something that was in always in my head. So the first two years, I chose to go into that lifestyle. Everything had been uh, taken, you know, or whatever you want to call it, you know, kids, no kids in the house, no house. You know, I had kids for 23 years in the house and now I don't have any relationship over uh, no home no car no money no job reputation uh everything you know freedom being jailed you know and so on but um the thing was is every day i would walk i would just take my stuff and i would just walk and and i was in a lot of pain right a lot of human pain mm -hmm. identity pain right mm. as a father as a this as a that you know whatever uh and i always thought is this my fucking ego this <laughs> having me walk 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 but i realized it wasn't it wasn't my ego my ego no. was you know i'd be walking and all of a sudden i would just start crying yeah you know and i'd want to my ego would want to stop my ego wanted to commit suicide my ego right. wanted to, to get killed fighting or whatever the case was right. but there was something moving my legs yes that was giving me life you yes. know and yes. uh and that was something i always wondered about so i had this conversation i thought that was my and i knew it was my soul but i knew my ego was right there but right. that wasn't my ego moving the legs right even though in my head i was going uh don't they don't ever give up on me i'm not quitting even right. though in my <laughs> head you know that night when i'm sleeping behind a building or something i'm going get me get me the fuck out of here you know right. right so yeah i appreciate that uh that information because i always wondered about that that's beautiful yeah, yeah. and that you know i i feel like when, when more and more people, more and more beings can actually trust that, can actually like trust that there's a, that movement that is like in, in, in the face of so much uh, destruction and breaking down and things not working on a certain level in the life, there's something else which is moving towards its own light. You know, when, that tr when the trust, it's, it's a trust that, has no doubt, I like to say. Mm -hmm. It's not the trust that is the opposite to doubt. It's, I, it's I, yeah. 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 When I when I was on the streets, I, I pull, obviously like many of us, when you reawaken, you pull in a lot of downloads. And one day I got this one, uh, go look up faith in the dictionary. I'm like, faith, you know, I don't need to look that up. <laughs> you know, but I went to look it up and there was two definitions, but there was a third one. And it was a transitive verb. And I'm, I've never even heard of a transitive verb, you know, but I knew that signified motion, right? And it said uh, to trust and believe. That's all it said. And I went, that's it right there. Like that walking was faith. That, right. that was that, right. that thing you're talking about. Right. And I don't know about you, but um, cause I certainly, and I knew this when it was happening to me, I, the people are suffering far worse than I am. I knew that. So 50 years old, homeless and lost everything. Hey, that's nothing compared to like someone like you. But one of the things that I found too, is that a person could lose their mind, literally lose, you know, go off the farm, l lose their marbles totally lose it and find the light at the same time yeah right? yeah absolutely you know? that's my right? experience yeah
Yeah, I, I also have a brother who's like in those extremes. It is amazing to see how much destruction and how much lostness. And at the same time, there is this like clarity. It's just amazing. Yeah. But whether the, uh, we don't know what, whether the ego will survive or we, we don't know. It can all be there at the same time and never, you know, it's, um, it brings us back to that question. Is, is there any way free will? It's, you know, it's, I kind of rest in, we live what we came here for. We're all living what we came here for, you know. Yeah. If we need to live something out, we're going to live it out. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're really in a time right now where trust is something that, you know, it's like it's so, so deep in our knowing. It's not of the mind. It's not of the belief of the, you may not believe it, but still there's a, there's a trust mm -hmm. that just knows that I'm living what I came here for. And to stay with this, no matter what, in the face of everything being torn down, nothing can take this. Well, true. And uh, as within, without, too, right? I mean, you were saying that earlier. All this stuff coming up is our, our stuff, isn't it? Like, like, it's a reflection of what we're seeing out there is a reflection of the stuff in us that... Yeah. I guess in a way we've given our power away to, such as in a way what say that again. It's like in a way I guess these things that are coming up are things that we've given our power away to. Yes. Uh, now it may not look exactly the same, but whatever we're being presented with is being projected from us, which means we must have done it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like how often do you know? I mean we look at something that's been um, like they even say being put into the, uh, into the system as a uh, perpetrator, as a uh, convicted, you know, person um, in, in, in say it's a very unjust scenario. Like it's just not fair. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but where have I done that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where does that live in me? Yeah. 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 Like I, like I know that I have within me some narcissistic frequencies. And, well, and that's, we, yeah, go on. Go, no, go ahead. go ahead. If we, if we, if we're able to rest in this, in the space of, uh, whole, the whole, whole ex existence itself, existential beingness then everything that's in this in this human consciousness is within that right mm -hmm. yes so whatever we're seeing or knowing in in the whole uh collective we're knowing it within ourselves. where else are we knowing it yeah we're knowing it to know it aren't we we're knowing it to know it like knowing it to realize it you yeah know. knowing it to like you said you, we're here to experience something and, and that's you know i mean it, it, on one hand it's it, it's weird because it's like don't take it too seriously but everything's got a purpose everything has got code or information the right there yeah. that's yeah. the paradox it's exactly. like yeah all and nothing there's there's nobody here and yet we're everybody how, how do you how does how do you get along with your ego now after all <laughs> these years what role does it play if any what, um, is it is it just sitting in the back seat with its seat belt on with a with a it's freely here i i feel like ego is needed it's to be in human form there needs to be a sense of self if that's what we're calling ego mm. there there will always be a sense of self um it's the the difference is the identification with that like taking that to be i so when it's freely here as a sense of self that's that's kind of like yeah it it knows 
boundaries. Mm. It knows clear boundaries, you know, like I need to have clear boundaries and not allow someone to uh, overtake my space. Uh, I put a boundary there. Why? Because I have a sense of self. Mm -hmm. So we could call that like uh, a sense of ego. You need it to cross the road in the first place. You need a boundary. So it's a sense of a healthy ego. I I call it a healthy ego Mm. is needed. It's maturity, you know, and um, to be able to relate with each other, we need a healthy ego. Um, but it's not what I am, and that's freely here. You know, it's like it can get touched, a button can get pushed, it can get triggered or whatever, but that's not what I am. So, therefore, I can just experience it freely. Mm. Um, and the, yeah, and then... ego got a bad rap, ego got a, a bad name, but it's the it's the identification with that sense of self that then wants everything for itself and the whole world revolving around this sense of me, 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 Mm -hmm. got to be about me. I want that for me. I'm the one. This identification with that sense then has ramifications that are the root of suffering. Yeah. So it's not that ego is guilty or a bad thing. It's non-existent anyway. It's a it's a, a sense of identity. You can't find it. Try to find it. Where we where will you find it? Mm-hmm. Where is it? Where does it exist? So it's, it's a sensation of identity that when we identify, when awareness, when what we are as consciousness identifies with that, then it takes the place of I am, and uh, yeah, then that is the root of separation suffering the hell realm that we're seeing so strongly in our um, collective but yeah healthy ego has a role it's not that it's not to be here like yeah yeah i like that yeah i like that uh i used to tell my kids that uh you know on one hand, I'd say you are the center of the universe. You are the universe, and then at other times, I'd say you're not the center of the universe. <laughs> and speaking <laughs> to the to the ego side. Oh, so, yeah. and you mentioned, uh, you know, your your re assimilation, you know, back into the world, uh, yeah. and then you just mentioned how the ego can get pushed and triggered and such. Uh, and and I love the fact that you're open about that. Uh, going back to your post as well we take on this belief system our ego (laughs) and we say we got this shit figured out and we don't we're always we're always and that's okay that's that's the whole thing is to to learn and expand but what do you do i'm curious what do you do do you get triggered uh and and if so what do you do to to get back to balance yeah, beautiful. Um, what what really when I when I was describing that about coming back into the uh, you know back into the world of relativity once I was deported back, um, everything was triggered, everything, and I couldn't quite understand how can I, you know, I'm knowing the, this being that is free, and now there's all this like drama coming up. There's mm. all this possession and jealousy and rejection and all those things getting touched and so that for me really was the beginning of inquiring into how do i how do i live knowing what i really am Mm. how do i live with all of this while it's all still and that became a, a living inquiry which you know i can say that that inquiry has been alive for over 20 years and that is the kind of work that i've been doing with people in the groups and retreats that i've been holding for the last 20 years um so uh i realized quite like i was in a relationship that's the best um best thing to trigger everything right so uh when that was all moving everything i had to question how can I be with this? How can I be 
honest with myself in the midst of this? How can I meet meet this? And to let all of those aspects come home in the truth that I am. It's like uh, energies, lost children, aspects of consciousness that just only wait to be included, to be met, to be felt, to be experienced, to be welcome, to be embodied, you know, so to, to experience that as waves of energy coming back to its own source, to sit right in that to experience it directly, mm-hmm. into knowing that who, who is actually here, you know, what is actually here. And th- there's this meeting of consciousness with sensation and this, the, the touch of meanness. It's like the, that sting of egoic, like sting, <clears throat> the touch of that being like met so intimately is opening that energy back to itself it's beautiful it's the homecoming Mm. and yeah i've been walking with that for a long time so the system now has that as a default that something is touched i go i'm I'm meeting it i'm in in right relationship with that meeting Mm. it feeling it all the way and then it's gone it's got it's got there's no, nothing for it to stick to. It doesn't stick and get carried like a weight that then has a thing going around that it needs uh, to prove itself or retaliation or that, it's, that, it, that it exists as an energy that it just doesn't. It comes back to yeah. self-love. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's like, it's like uh, being recognized. Um, yeah. like, so, you know, we think about separation and all the programming and the, you know, the whatever, but it actually happens right here. Something happens. There's an immediate separation because we don't like the way it feels, or we don't like mm. what we think of ourselves or whatever. But like, you're talking about bringing them back. Right. I mean, there's a lot of talk about through the door way of feeling. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, that seems to be the way we operate in this existence that we're coming into this awareness we're coming into of ourselves and what we might call the world or reality. Right. I mean, it's all through feeling, right? Yeah. It really and, and is. Through feel, through going right to the heart of whatever feeling is there, as you said, it expands open mm-hmm. in, into the whole cosmos. So it is through the, the doorway of feeling, even if it's a feeling we don't want. Once we go there, through that doorway, it opens. And it's beautiful. And how, how much of a lifetime have we done? Have we like avoided feeling what doesn't feel good? You exactly. know, with alcohol, sex, drugs, right. whatever it was always to move away from what didn't feel good. We tried to get a better feeling. Actually, the better feeling is right in the heart of every feeling. Yeah, that's what all that stuff was, was trying to feel something, wasn't it? Yeah. The sex, drugs, rock and roll. Um, it was would, good. You, would you say that, <laughs> would you say that, uh, would you say that there's, when it comes to embodiment, because yeah. that's, that's a word that's used a lot too, right? Like the words we were talking about. Yeah, uh, that one probably hasn't taken as much extra stuff on because it's kind of a embodiment means embodiment. But what I was going to ask you was, yeah. would you say that applies more to embodying our multidimensional aspects or embodying those human aspects that we separated ourselves from? Mm. I would say both. Hmm. Yeah, it's really because it comes hand in hand, it comes together like, like when we embody the human aspects, when we when our human is coming aligned to our depth, right, then uh, 
the depth comes through the personality or through the human behaviors. So our behaviors begin to change. Whereas in the beginning of what we call awakening, waking up, waking up, it can seem like uh, there's this realization, but the behaviors are belonging to yesteryear. You know, like there's still old behaviors that belong to the mm. the alcoholic or the traumatized child, or the the those old behaviors are still acting out. But as we start to embody the feelings and go to the wound and feel everything that's been denied, then quite naturally, I would say, those behaviors begin to change. And what we really know to be true and deep and come from honesty and love, mm -hmm. I feel honesty is a real doorway, mm -hmm. is a real key. Then that begins to change the behavior where, you know, we might like an old behavior might kick in and then we see it and go, uh-uh. Yeah. And, uh, come on, come on, come on, come with me, come with me. And just kind of bring that little one, that little aspect, that child wound over to come on, come here, let's be yeah. honest. Let's go. And we start the, the truth starts to speak through the language of the psychological self instead of the lies it tells itself to keep itself safe. Right. So the embodiment it's all like to come back to your question you're embodying what you really are as you embody those yeah. old behaviors and it's up leveled up yeah, uh, an, like update, an update instead of saying an upgrade as if you're achieving something there's an update you don't actually achieve something with an update well you might get a better computer with a better program but you know it's there's an update it gets yeah, updated yeah. and it's beautiful because we attract the people to us to play something else to play something out to bring about that update because yeah. if if we're committed to honesty there's going to be a, an update yeah, it's like uh, what you're saying is embodiment is is a uh, it's like walking the talk. It's like yeah. it's like uh, what I'm hearing you say is I don't have to go back and find every single little thing that's that's not embodied or or that's separated me from myself. Exactly. If I can just take the information that I've got up to this point and I can actually live it, then those things will be presented to me, yes. you know, to re to realign with myself. Beautifully expressed. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. Cause it is, we talk about conscious living and I know people, you know, again, the connotations of the words, but really what you're talking about. I mean, to me, it's the humility mm. and the integrity, which is the honesty, right? I mean, and yeah. first was self. I mean, like you can't fake the humility. No. Uh, and if you don't have it, the universe will certainly apply uh, experiences <laughs> so that you will. And then you have the integrity yeah. part, which are the other way I look at it too, is like people talk about being authentic. So, you know, okay, I'm going to have the awareness to be authentic. And that's going to put me in situations that are going to make me vulnerable, which is, I think that part of it is what you're talking about, where because you're consciously living and applying and walking the talk, these old things that, that were in your subconscious come up to be seen. And then from that vulnerability, you have a choice to be in integrity and in honesty. Uh, and then from there, it becomes this transparency. Yes, which beautiful. I think is like the physical manifestation of our experience. You might call it the physicalization of telepathy. Beautiful. Like if I meet you, you meet me and we're in that field. Yeah. Then we know exactly what we don't just know what we're thinking. We know everything about the other, which is yeah. really more information there's about there's myself. One, so there's yeah. one there's a meeting of, of one knowing mm -hmm. itself. And um, what you would, how you were just going with that is really beautiful. Um, 
uh, th what came for me was um, that integrity and that humility and, and that honesty has to begin within our own psyche. Can we really be honest with ourselves in the first place? Mm -hmm. Can we tell the truth inside? You know, like, because we've got so used to kind of like giving a false face out there that it can happen in here where we actually trick ourselves into believing that we're right about something. Yes. And if we can just admit to ourselves inside that we actually are playing an old game that needs to drop. You know, that right there is oh, such a freedom. We free ourselves and then it's kind of we get the opportunity to put that outside. And right on. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. that's a. Uh... There is nothing more delicious than a true meeting. Uh, this this movement of integrity and honesty and the, all the thing that we were describing it's so fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's thought provoking. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you along those lines too. Uh, I mean, I can relate to. I think a lot of people who can relate to it, you know, there, there's a lot of things we say and they sound really good. And we've heard them for a long time, even going back to sacred texts, go within so on. Um, but there's, there's a big difference between consciously applying it and just being able to say it and say, you know, it, and I put myself in that category. But one of those things is taking, is, is actually taking responsibility not just from this point going forward, but everything that's happened to me, like right. everything that's been, like I used to hear back in those days, circumstances and consequences are the same thing. Circumstances okay. And consequences. So in other, in other words, is it a circumstance or is it a consequence of something somebody did to me? Right. Uh, it, so it was basically taking the external out of it, saying it doesn't matter at this point whether someone did it to you or you did it. You, you did it. It's all you, you know. So it's, I think we go along with that thing about how you when you elevate, you actually bring you change the past, so to speak. Yeah. You change. And, I, and there's truth to that, certainly from yeah. an energetic level. But like, did you have a point where you just said, I, I'm this is all my gig. I'm taking full responsibility from this point on. I mean, did that happen to you when you were in solitary? Uh, no, I don't, I, well, I don't know. So many moments happened in there, you know, so many moments of dying and facing, like facing so many moments and breaking down, completely breaking down and then coming, rising up out of the ashes again, you know, more innocent, more, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think from the beginning, when I was in there, I knew it was mine. I knew right. I put myself there. I knew this was for me. You know, I, I knew as, as much as there were many voices in going on, like, am I ever going to, how am I going to get out? What if, if this didn't happen and that didn't happen and this person didn't do that and who put me here and all of that going on at the same time, this knowing that I, I put myself here, yeah. you know, this is for me. And yeah, I think those moments have arisen throughout the life in many difficult circumstances. I mean, that was probably the most extreme, but there's been plenty of other challenge. Um, I think in certain moments there have been like facing myself and going, you put yourself here. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. That's and a tough some, one. Yeah. And at the same time, there's a knowing deeper than that. That's, that's like all of it has been for this, you know, so we could have this conversation right now and be able to meet the way we do mm -hmm. all of it is for this 
and all it, all it's ever been about is for this to deepen and reveal itself ever more so whatever has needed to be lived through or is needed to go through it's all for this in the end you know what what are your feelings about i know i'm keeping you extra long but we're almost done. Uh, done. what are your feelings about creation about creating i i hesitate to use the word manifestation um i like the word creating much better mm. what are your thoughts on that you know there's so much talk i never really resonated with the law of attraction and the secret and i'm not knocking it i'm just saying that there was something missing for me uh almost like not considering the dark uh in that in that uh school of thought but what are your thoughts on okay so we're aware we've got enough information we know what's going on we know we're bigger than that now what do i want to do mm. like from that point of view like what are your thoughts on creation how we how we can best do that or anything you might have yeah this is this is something that um i'm really facing myself at the moment um because there there is a knowing um that you know i i'm kind of living a okay i'm here right now in this beautiful space of openness and i have space i have silence i have space and within that creativity itself it's like all of the obstacles are removed the obstacles of the that weigh down the life are removed in in this moment because right. i have a little gap right and uh in that naturally what i am as creativity itself is rising up and and it's here it's 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 life itself pure creativity without obstacles right um right. and i can feel it i can feel like i'm i'm in i'm in my place i mean i mean like right now i all the obstacles removed i feel creativity like coming to express itself in you know like i don't know what but it's here it's alive and at the same time i have a, a a commitment to you know my father is with dementia quite sick and there's nobody to you know i'm like overseeing his situation and for that reason i've been in a kind of sacrificial role the last mm -hmm. five years and i soon fly back to that situation in which i place myself in a limited limitation where there's a lot of pressures and there's a lot of uh I'm, i don't have my space i don't have my i have yeah. the obstacles of on, on my time and on my space you know so and within that the creativity uh that i'm speaking about that's that's here now is kind of there's a weight on it yeah yeah. And so what comes really clear to me in these days, in fact, I was speaking of this last night on our, I was like a, a members community, I was speaking there, how all we need to really, really, really do to be in, because he guy was asking me about um, how do I get in the God space? How do I let the creativity of, hmm. call it God, whatever you want to call it, the intelligence come through and create? And the response was and is, is that all we ever really need to do is remove the obstacles, remove the, remove and create space, that there is space yeah. enough for who we are to yeah. have the space to be. And now out, out of this, you know, it's, it's breaking down the obstacles of repetitive life that's in the mundane clockwork uh schedule all of that kind of creates a kind of a a weight around this free creativity that godliness is i'm using another word that's kind of overused to say the least um but yeah pure creativity is our nature yeah and yeah. when our nature is you know confined that creativity is kind of suppressed yeah. somehow. Yeah, I like that. That's a that's a really good way to look at it. I mean, because like you, we know this through 
science and study that uh, psych psychologically, physiologically, fear suppresses creativity. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just, Absolutely. I like what yeah. you're saying because uh, uh, there's less emphasis. And even when it comes to what am I going to create? It's more like, uh, you know, b creating that space. And I like the way you describe that too, because a lot of times we do talk about boundaries, like you talked about it earlier, but it's almost like create, there are, there is, there's no need for me to protect myself. And in that same, uh, you know, in that same type of uh, respect, I don't even need to think about what I need to create because I, I've created this boundless space, which is me, however I had to do it. And whatever my heart, the universe knows my heart. So it's going to bring me to that, which meant, you know what I mean? So I get that. That's, that's a good way to. In a way, another word that's really, really overused is channel, right? Yeah, yeah. Channeling. Ooh la la. Um, but in a way to, to, to use that word in, in its proper place, once the obstacles and the space has been created, what's here is a channel mm -hmm. for godliness to express itself right. cre creatively. And, it, it, you know, it's like we get on here and we have this conversation. We don't need to know what is the conversation. It's right. creativity flowing. And it's, yeah, it's cre creating that space for, okay, now use me. Whatever right. me is, you know, whatever me is, each one of us has a unique gift when, you know, every one of us is bringing the same creativity through by expressing itself in such a unique mm -hmm. flavor or, and, and that's beautiful. And it is such, it's a, to, for that to be crushed or held back is when, a life doesn't feel lived yeah. somehow because it's, it's the creativity of life, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's all about that. Made in the image, you know, made in the image to me is something created us and we just continue to create kind of thing, right? How can we not be that that created us? How can we not be it I, if it created it's itself? Yeah. 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 So yeah, great conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> good way to start the week. Uh, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And again, thank you for coming in. And uh, Ananta Kranti, I know she, you can find her on Facebook and she talked about a group she has. So check her page out. Um, yeah. So uh, I wish you the best, uh, best with you and your father and all your loved ones, all blessings to you, all blessings to your endeavors and, and all that. And I just want to say until we meet again, yeah, thank Thanks you. Again. Really yeah. enjoyed. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone, whoever's there. <laughs> <laughs>